Everybody, hi, welcome to This Week in Mormon. This is the best podcast you will ever listen to for the rest of your life. Nice to be here. How's that for exciting, Danielle? Jeff, why are you such an angry elf? I've decided today is going to be an angry day. It might be because I, I only had... I think we have a rant coming on. I, I had a yogurt and apple for lunch. I That's feel that I need starch. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Well, I also had a, a little pastry because they were free. It was wonderful. It was, I'm, it eating was, two by, I'm eating two bite brownies from Whole Foods. In case my listeners could not hear that. Why, that's, that is the delightful taste of fresh baked brownies brought to you in a plastic bin. Tell us, Al, what will you be eating today? That. Yeah, two by brownies. I just told you. You go to Whole Foods when there's a, a Harris? No. Han- Harmons. Harmons. I've been to that Harmons. It's exciting. That's a hipster Harmons. It's a good one. <laughs> it is the hipster Harmons. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. No, it's, just it wonderful. is delightful. She this tried really pretty. She tried pesto for the first time. It's wonderful. Just wonderful. What is that from? Arrested Development. Remember we used to quote it a lot on this show? I don't remember pesto. It's a vague reference, I think, in season one or two when when Lindsay and maybe go to visit their grandma. Oh no, no, <laughs> they hear that their grandma is alive and well, but she's dead, and Lucille says she tried pesto for the first time. Huh. Ha. Huh. Neat. The funny thing about a true story is our own Nana tried pesto for the first time. Oh, that is neat. At 90. I still haven't finished watching season four of, of Arrested Development. Is that weird? It is weird. It's been nearly a year. You've had enough time to get through it. In the time that you spend out recording, you know, your personal recordings of you singing along with popular songs of the day, you know the ones I'm <laughs> one talking about. F- one of my favorite pastimes, if I may. You know the, one, the ones you refuse to share with the public. Unfortunately. Whoever whoever finds my computer when I die will laugh their heads off. How many of you? What what's your most recent uh, composition? Well, not composition. Your most recent work? Uh, no, I will not share. Tell me things. what the most recent one is that you've done. No, tell me, Jeff. I'm a man of my of my scruples, my laurels. You don't I have sit you, on them. You don't have to play it or share it with anyone. I just want to know what it was. Was it naughty? Is that why? Is it wrecking ball? No, it's, no, it's not naughty, Jeff. Well, I guess it would be explicit on iTunes, but that's besides the point. You're a confusing man with the profanity. I don't understand you. So so here's a question for you. I have never in my entire life seen a rated R movie uh, that was not edited for TV, except for one movie. I saw Bloodsport when I was nine years old at my buddy DJ's <laughs> birthday party. And it was amazing. Uh, I don't know why they thought it was a great idea to show a bunch of nine-year-old kids that, but it was the best thing I'd ever seen up to that point. And uh, mom was very disappointed with me. But so like rated R movies have never been a part of my of my uh, my my upbringing at all. May I enter? Oh, okay. So what oh, is your ahead. question? Yes. No, 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 no. Well, no. well I was just say that might be true, but I submit to you the summer of two thousand eight, when two young Yo. men would sit in another younger brother's bedroom. Surrounded by Lord of the Rings paraphernalia, yeah. and and play Grand Theft Auto Four with reckless abandon. No, we would, we would. Well, so there's there's things in our lives that we all do uh, that that let's see, there's there's things that we all do that kind of supplement that stuff, right? We all have our vices, so to speak. And so, I mean, I it took me a while to get to the point where I realized that even though I don't swear, drink caffeine, or watch rated R movies, I was not perfect. Uh, but that realization has helped me immensely not to uh, be as much of a schmuck as I used to be. So, so well, what was your original question? I don't quest? claim I don't claim that I am beyond vices or that I uh, that I'm perfect or, or anything of that nature or that the fact that I don't watch radar movies sets me apart or sets me above anybody else. You but are I don't. a special people. I don't watch them, uh, and and as far as I'm concerned, it's a good line of demarcation of just like, all right, well I'm like. I'm going to select from this subset, right? I'm not going to worry about this, these other ones just because even though some are good, some are bad, maybe I won't worry about it. But from this subset, I will select from those. And that's worked very well for me in my life, right? Okay. Well, and so I don't, have, I don't have those parameters in video games, right? I don't have those parameters in, uh, 
I guess music, I like. I didn't really have any criteria in the music that I listen to. I enjoy a wide variety of uh, of of jams, if you will. Yeah. And so there's, I mean, there's parts, there's other places where I've sort of ignored good counsel from the brethren, and then places where I've done really well. I, so I here, I find uh, that for some reason, film for me, stuff like profanity in film sticks with me more than it does in music, and I don't know why. But if yeah, I, I knew- if I were to catch a glimpse or whatever. Of a, of a movie laden with profanity, I'll just be like, ah, 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 ah. But if I were to hear a song that might drop two F-bombs, I'm not saying I love it, but I definitely don't find it as jarring as I might if it's in a film. I don't know why. Well, and I have, I have, I mean, to this point in my life, I have said a swear word one time. One time. And my sister was there when I said it, and she gasped when I said it. I, it, I was watching the Warriors play on TV. I was 11 years old and the Warriors came back from like a 30 point deficit and they won the game. And I turned to my sister and I said, man, that was one heck of a game. And she gasped. And so I slapped her in the face. That was in my mind, (laughs) in my mind, that was a better scenario than her telling anybody that I swore better to show the handprint on her face. I slapped her in the face. So you, so instead you abused a member of your family. That's right. Uh, uh, a female member of my family, and I got in a lot of trouble for that. But uh, but I I've neither hit a woman nor sworn since then okay. ever. But did we? Um, was there origi- an original point to the whole R-rated thing? That you yes. Up? Yeah. Well, so okay. so here's so I read the book Lone Survivor uh, just a couple of months ago, right? Well, like like I'm I read this book and I was man I was just so enamored by it. Now the story was really really moving to me, and there was some. You know, there's a couple of swears in it, but it's the story of the of the Navy SEAL team that goes over to Afghanistan and gets ambushed by this army, uh, just tore up and terrible things happen. And the guy lives through it and he makes it. There's one guy that comes back from it all. Um, and I was, I mean, I was really touched by the story. And so there's a movie coming out this Friday. Uh, and yeah. for the first yeah. for the first time in my entire life, I'm I'm like Passion of the Christ. I was like, no, I read the book. Book is better. You know, I just don't care, and so, so I like I. <laughs> you mean the I'm Bible? Thinking, yeah, I've yeah heard of it. It was good. It was phenomenal. Uh, but I'm but I'm thinking to myself, and I'm wondering, uh, well, because man, I lo- well, I guess I'm trying to justify whether or not it's okay to go to this. We, Jeff and I, we talked. I mean, we had this come up with the Book of Mormon musical, and we felt like it was. Uh, it would be sage for for neither of us to see that. I mean, yeah. we talked through a lot of this, okay. so that well, I'm I'm sort of bringing this up in a well. Well, in a well let dialogue. me help. Let me help you with this. I'm looking yeah. at IMDb right now, uh, the right. parental guide for Lone Survivor. Or okay? we can go to OK.com, the church affiliate. Or you can go to KidsInMind.com. Go to any of these. I don't know if you've but, looked it up already. It says it's very bloody, lots of gore, and 143 uses of the f word and its derivatives. So. The question is, if you want to sit through 100... 143? That's more than one per minute, because the film is only 121 minutes long, and that's including credits. So That may be excessive. Yeah. That may be excessive. But I've, so I've got, some, I've got a friend of mine who is like adamant, she will only go and see like Disney Pixar films, right? And, and uh, very kind of cheesy topic films, and it bothers me, because I'm like, well, we could... I mean, we can handle grown-up... Uh, not not like grown up. I don't want like dirty sex stuff, but I'm like we can handle grown up topics. Well, right? it's, we don't it's, we don't have to live in a world of only seeing up. No, but it's relative to others. And for one thing, I would not every movie's this way, but I would dispute the allegation that Pixar movies lack any kind of of heady depth in any no, way. No, but but you up know, dealt but you with a miscarriage. Saying, right? For goodness' sake, yes, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Well, and what I feel like I, a lot of times being raised in the church, I mean, we're so adamant about like don't don't watch anything bad that we cut out a lot of that a lot of that stuff. I remember I remember even like I, I mean I've still never seen Braveheart or Last of the Mohicans. And these are movies that I I have on good authority. They're quality, very well done, good movies. But I just don't watch them because they're rated R. I, I just don't. And my life, honestly, like I don't feel like my life has been less off because of it. Yeah. Uh, there's just this one this one situation where I like I really I really have an appreciation for the story, especially right this moment, and uh, I I have a moment of consideration, shall we say? Well, I think now you know that you don't need to see it. It's very rated R. Very rated R. 
Yeah, and it depends yeah. on what bugs people, right? I mean, war like war violence, at least for me, is not as jarring as I guess you know, horror movie violence or something like that. Like I, I could never, I cannot handle like creepy horror films. No, I, so so nudity really bothers me. Uh, nudity violence. I watched. I watched. Uh, um, the, well, this. I, I feel guilty admitting this. I do not recommend Breaking Bad to anyone, but Breaking Bad, I. I I watched through, and there were some parts that just bothered me and have stuck with me, and like still to this moment. I know, and it stinks because Breaking Bad's like one of the best shows ever made. But know? they are, but there is gore in there that's beyond anything I've seen movie wise. I mean, like where guys are killing each other and stuff like that. And that's another that's another thing that's interesting, right? I don't watch rated R movies, but because it's on TV, I'm like, well, I mean, if it were a movie, for sure it'd be rated R. Well, especially when it's on if it's on basic cable. Because then it's very easy to assume it's not going to cross a certain line because basic cable can't. Like I don't imagine you're going to watch Game of Thrones, even though that's on. No, you know, I, on TV. I don't. I yeah, haven't. Yeah, but um, the one the funny thing since we're talking, I guess, about standards and whatever, it's all relative to people. I, I don't know if this I'm before or against this or not, just for the sake of censorship and who knows what else. But it's it is nice, as flawed as it is, that we have a movie rating system, and it's also nice, as flawed as it is, that we have a TV rating system, even though it's kind of a mess. But you know how it is: you turn an episode of something on, and sometimes it's TV PG, and then another one you turn on, it's TV fourteen, and it's, you see it's for dialogue, language, and sexuality, or who knows what else. But with books and the theater, you just never know. Yeah, Th- there's no, that's true, and that's their artistic freedom, and it's fine. But Especially for the theater, because I love going to the theater, but sometimes, man, if you just don't know what you're getting into, you might sit there and just be blown away by the content that's presented to you. And there's absolutely no way to know that without just doing a lot of you know research online and trying to find out what the content is in advance. And the same goes for books. I don't know if it would be good to have – I mean, no rating system is mandatory. Not even the, – the movie rating system is not even mandatory. Right. But uh, everyone does it because you kind of need to to be marketable in that sense. So I don't know. It would be – I wouldn't mind having some kind of a rating system for other materials. I've read books before, and then like I read an Anthony Bourdain book a couple of years ago. All right, his his famed book Kitchen Confidential. I think Anthony Bourdain is pretty amusing. Some people hate him, but I liked it. But I read this book. I think I think my wife read it once too. My wife read it too, so she can vouch for this. You get to these points when it's suddenly all this profanity and language comes in, and you tell yourself, "Okay, well it was just that moment." Just that little bit there, it'll pass. So you soldier on. But then it keeps happening. And I keep telling myself, oh, that'll be the end of it. There won't be more. Next thing you know, you've read the whole book, and it's just been laden with all sorts of delightful epithets and things along those lines. Sorry, Al. You can talk now and not type. No, I'm I'm trying to think about it, right? Because, like, well, I, I even know people that will read, uh, they'll, they'll read books and then black out with marker any swear words so that their kids can then go read them. <laughs> I did that with a slang dictionary I picked up on my mission. And you'd have like entire pages would be blacked out because it'd be nothing but just like sexual slang. <laughs> that was terrible. Yeah. But that yeah, book but- helped us to know what the dumb kids were calling us when they yelled at us in the streets. And then I understood. It was good. <laughs> Much better than the ignorance. I was like, ah, so that's what that means. All right. Good deal. Oh, I see. My eyes have been opened. I understand now. Yeah, well, well, and so like, I mean, but the the effectiveness of that, I mean, reading a a book that's been edited in that way, I mean, it's just kind of silly because your mind immediately fills in the gaps, right? In a way, but sometimes, honestly, I would think that if you if you strive to keep your mind away from these things, your mind can only fill in the gaps so much. And sometimes you could read something that if you had not filled in the gaps and read what was actually there, you you would be appalled and say, oh my God. When I was growing up, I worked, I worked on, I worked uh, doing festivals like jazz festivals and blues festivals and and pop festivals and stuff. And the guys I'd work with setting up fences and stages, were not the classiest group of people. And uh, I I got in this habit where as they would swear, I would mumble the literal translation under my breath. uh, And it was quite comical to me. Um, You know, the, the (laughs) poop and fecal matter. They hated you. (laughs) Sexual intercourse that they were, uh, sex me and sexual me sex with me and like you know the the things that they would that they would say and uh-huh. i i mean i was entertained but what it did for me is it made it to where i was not thinking about the swear words i was thinking about my like my own my own uh you know the literal translation that was humorous and not at all offensive to me and uh and that i mean that worked fine and so like like you get in these modes where if you're around it and you have good mechanisms for dealing with it you're you're probably fine 
But I mean, I'm I'm just at this at a weird point of of asking, you know, like is there is there value that we're excluding by skipping out on this and well i've been and, uh, i've been, and i've been there too man i mean we've talked we've talked about it before on the show i mean i i cuz i don't at least as far as ratings go i do agree that it's nice to just have a baseline and just not cross it i think that's pretty easy yeah but uh but i don't i try not to leave it to that like i just look at like i look into the reasons why things are what they are and make choices for myself like even like i've openly said i saw the king's speech and it didn't freak me out. It was one scene, and it wasn't in a bad way. I didn't love it or anything like that, but it wasn't that big of a deal. And that was a case where I said, you know what? I don't think this is going to be a problem for me because the overall tone was a lot different from uh, from what you would find in other films. It wasn't flippant. Right. It's not to make an excuse, but for me, I felt okay with that. I don't watch. I mean, I don't watch R-rated movies either. It's a thing I, I don't do. But uh, and every now and then there are ones that come along that, of course, they're tempting because they look cool or they look interesting. But you just. And well, I, I remember, I remember, like the Gladiator came out, and everybody's like, "It's the greatest movie ever." And I was like, "Man, I want to see that so bad." And I waited. Finally, it comes out on TV like three years later, and I was like, "That was actually really stupid." It's not the greatest film ever made. There was I'm there, amazed like, at one my best life. Picture. My life yeah. was not was not impacted at all by my inability to see or my uninterest in seeing that. Right, and I think that's the main message. Our lives are typically speaking not going to be negatively impacted from missing out on the on things. They're just not. You know, I mean. It, and that's the best takeaway I think I can I can get from any of that. You're, well, well, you're, you're right. Really well, and I, I like actually, you know what? I think I think even in this specific circumstance, right? Like I enjoyed the book. I enjoyed the book. Uh, I like I handled, um, you know, the the swearing and whatever was written in there. But it, you know, it wasn't it wasn't offensive to me. There definitely wasn't a hundred and forty some instances of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so I mean, like I. F- Maybe maybe it would be tarnished if I went and saw this. So so I may just be better off. Like, what well, I think I will. I think I I will be better off in just enjoying the the story via the book instead of worrying about going to see it. Yeah, yeah. Just let the book be the book. You know, it's like Jurassic Park. If they would have made it just like the book, it would have been rated R. So yeah, you know. Just the, Anywho, this, well, for, for some reason, this makes me want to talk about one of these stories we have this week that is the top 10 things to do your first week back from a Mormon mission. Oh, what, what are they, Jeff? I don't know what? why it made me want... Probably because there's one that talks about... We missed all of banter. We missed all of it. No, well, that was our banter. That's fine. It all works out. We can, we can <laughs> banter about church things. It's amazing. Um, no, but what about... Uh, but I don't know. for some reason, this jumped out at me. Probably because you mentioned your friend who only watches Pixar movies, and I think one of the one of the items on the list sort of alludes to that. And I personally disagree with it. And maybe we'll publish our own list at thisweekinmormons dot com of our own list of things to do or that we did do. Am am I like am I being naive in the fact that I like like do we have a problem with being raised with a with a social or uh, cultural taste that are um. I guess childish. Like we we don't we're not built to handle adult topics or themes. Like well, is there yeah, well, is there the, any kind of a downside to that? Well, there's a I think there's a different thing. There's adult what you would call adult content, right? And, like and mainly there, pornography. I mean, I feel like we should be. No, I'm just. And kidding. then there are maybe adult themes, which are different things. And I think the point of this whole discussion, Al, is that you have you are studying it out and pondering it and trying to find answers for yourself. And that's the best thing that we can do. As Latter Day Saints, all too oh, often. Oh, that's such a cop out. No, Jeff. it's not a cop out. All too often, I think we want to have President Monson show up and tell us every single decision that we need to be making. Well, that's right. Notice in even no, for well, so I got sent. Uh, I was talking to a friend about this, and they sent me for Strength of Youth, and I'm like, I'm like, well, that's fantastic. I am not a youth. Ah, but that one for the but, strength of Al, but the, Doan. <laughs> but that one I feel is fair because. Uh, and the brethren have been have given talks about this and said, "Hey, for the strength of youth is a good thing, but it's not just for youth. Those are guidelines that everyone in the church can follow and use to to chart your course." Well, so, sure, and I I don't I don't argue that at all. So I don't they, think they, it's, they're it's out they're good, point. but they have room to be grown upon. Don't yeah, they, they do because not everything in there is perfectly applicable. I mean, for the strength of youth, will tell you to group date and not get into serious relationships before your mission, which makes no sense when you're an adult when it's the complete opposite. So wait, wait, wait. Is that why I'm single? Al, are you still doing group dating at this stage in your life? I still want to pair off and are you feel try- like I'm... I, I, I picture you trying to enter into uh, polygamous relationships where you want to have many girlfriends at the same time. 
Yeah, but I want them to all have their own husbands so I don't have to take care of them. I'm like a cheap polygamist. So you just want to, what, be able to make out with them? No, I just want to hang out. I like friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that works. That's good. All right, then. No, so, well, so anyway, keep going. So, <clears throat> Oh, I don't remember what we were saying. Oh, did, uh, we de- did we decide, like, the, you, you're hiding behind the... Uh, Oh, whoa, whoa, oh, wait, wait, wait. I never finished my thought. So for the strength of youth does not say rated R movies, right? They don't say no, well, no, but rated been, R movies. But we've or, been through this. The church doesn't say rated R movies anymore because the church has become globalized and limiting counsel to a rating system. Right, that, and, we're, and we're comfortable with the fact the that like, rated, R, rated R movies should – I mean, it's that's a broad stroke from society saying here's a line that we're going to say is just kind of crummy. Let's not cross it, right? Are you typing that we should move on? Because if you are, no, stop no, it. No, I'm actually looking up entertainment and media in For the Strength of Youth to see what it actually says now. That's that's all I'm saying. Okay, what are you finding? Well, it's long, but it's and of course it's adapted, but it says, you know, we live in a day of marvelous technologies, yada, yada, yada. Blah, blah, blah. The information blah. and entertainment provided through these can increase your ability to communicate and become a force for good. However, some information can lead you away from righteous living. Choose wisely. When using media, because whatever you read, listen to, or look at has an effect on you. Select only media that uplifts you. So Satan uses media to deceive you by making uh, what is wrong and evil look normal, humorous, or exciting. He tries to mislead you into thinking that breaking God's commandments is acceptable and has no negative consequences uh, for you and others. Then it goes on, like, do not attend, view, or participate in anything that's vulgar, immoral, violent, or pornographic in any way. Okay. So, so uh, I mean, those are those are great guidelines, right? And should yes. we should we surmise from that 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 means no rated R movies, and that means that if a song has a swear word in it, we should avoid it? But I, I think for the surmise? first one, everyone has to make their own decisions. I think it's very easy, at least in the states. We have listeners outside of the states, so forgive us for uh, this America centric conversation. NC seventeen, whatever you. Want, but if people. you. I think a good baseline for a lot of people is no rated R movies. And there's nothing wrong with that. And the church used to say no rated R movies. And they just stopped doing it, like we said, because we're an international church now. And that doesn't make sense to, to, to limit it just to a U.S. designation. But, uh, yeah, rated R movies and avoid them if you want. But be prayerful about it. Seek it out in your own mind so you know things and figure it out. I mean, like it said right there, your baseline, your guidelines can be seek things that are uplifting that don't drag you down, that don't mess with your head, that don't make you think – that uh, what Satan would have you believe is the way things should to be. Should be. Should to be. Yeah, should to be. Well, that's the point. That's There's the stuff right there. Follow that guideline and, and seek it out and try to understand it. I think the, the risky thing is when we just are so uh, um, inundated and normalized with certain types of content – that we don't take a step how back. Do, and, how do you and balance? Reflect. Okay, so we're—I mean, we're going long on this, and I apologize. But like, how do you balance that? Like, keep good, clean, pure thoughts, only uplifting things, and still be able to delve into and have intelligent discussion on adult-themed topics. Well, I think that's fair. Like, we often there's a, always a criticism of American news, for example, because we have you know, with censorship, decency laws, things like that. And but but the world basically is R-rated. Now we choose how much we want to participate in it. Uh, and how actively we want to engage in any of those things, but well, the world, right. but that but the world around us is R-rated, it is, and there's no getting around it. I mean, so it's just a decision of how I'm, much of that we need to actually uh, inculcate and take upon ourselves, and how much of that we block out and understand. Is, is there? Uh, and I think that's my my question: Is there a responsibility on us as members of the church to, uh, I guess, be Exposed to some of these topics or some of these, uh, yeah, I guess topics. Of course, there is the Book to, of Mormon. To a point the, to appreciate the, it, but but like you can't do that and avoid the negative or avoids all the bad all the time. Well, right? you can't. I mean, the Book of Mormon is a perfect example. The Book of Mormon, is on its own, is a straight adaptation. Is basically rated R for violence. You right? can't and, tell me that scene with the daughter of Jared Dance of Frakish wouldn't get a little crazy in a movie. Let's be honest. Exactly. People. Exactly. So, of course, that's there. There's heady subject matter in the Book of Mormon. But I think it's a great example to us in that the takeaway there, or like anything else, the Old Testament's another great example. Um, We could get wrapped up in all of the violence and the difficulty and the thoughts it could put in our head. But the important thing we're looking for is to to learn that, for one, uh, most of those evils are portrayed in a negative light. 
and to focus on the positive and the mess and the important messages that we can take away from things. We're going to have yeah. bad stuff around us all the time. Our entire lives we will. And I think we can use a lot of that to learn and to grow because it's a difficult world out there. And personally, I feel that we are better off. We don't want to try to inoculate ourselves against things so that we're naive and that we live in a bubble. But uh, I think we can learn from the world around us, but then actively p- engage in righteous pursuits on our own so that our day-to-day for ourselves is more positive and uplifting than what would be around us if we just kind of let it go by default. Sure. Okay. You, okay. You may so rebut what, what me. Was your, what, what was your topic in the uh, that you wanted to touch on in the top 10 things to do your first week back from a mission? I think I derailed you. Oh, it's okay. You can derail me all you want. There was one that mentioned something, I think, on here about like... This is a really dumb article, by the it way. It is Kevin a really dumb Johnson, article. Kevin Johnson, you are the next McKay Coppins, you weenie. <laughs> anyway. Go to BuzzFeed and write your top 10 articles. Oh, here's one of the ones. Number four, ease into, don't dive into, old hobbies and media habits. Re-entering the world of movies, music, social media, and your favorite hobbies from before the mission can be a strange and even intimidating experience. He felt uncomfortable watching Toy Story. Don't let other people... See, that's for, what I'm talking that's about. That's what man. I read this and I said, you felt... I'm sorry. That's a problem. If you feel uncomfortable watching Toy Story 3, then yes, you need to maybe evaluate a few things in your life. Because Toy Story what, 3 that, does that, is a great movie and it deals with some complex themes about loss and things like that. But it is not a movie that should make you take pause and f- and make you squirm in your seat. Except for the part well, when we they have get a lot of people, man, there's especially in my experience living out here in Utah, there's there are crummy like off the deep end uh, people that claim to be more, but there's also this whole subset of Kaysville saints, if you will, uh, who who have avoided somehow. They've they've built this bubble that is a a great bubble that has protected them all their growing up years. But as part of it, they are so innocent and so good and pure uh, that that like they I mean they they don't they don't get humor. They don't get uh, topics. They don't get uh, appreciate. I mean. Toy Story 3, there are people, good girls, who are not coming from a mission who have sat in that movie and said, this, this is wrong. We should leave. And yeah, I'm like, if, what are you talking if about? If you can't watch a rated G movie, then that's that's just a problem. I'm sorry. Well, is it is it a problem or are they or are they godlike beyond us? No, I don't think Should we I, be in encouraging that, in, that? In that case, no, I don't think that anybody would be I, I think that's that's just naivete. I mean, that's just Come on, it, Toy Story three. I understand if someone like when Don't I was get in, caught on Toy Story three. I mean, this is think think like uh, like I mean movies. Uh, any any movie that has a good maybe a good overall message, but well, I mean, the, here, here's a here's I, a good. I, I'm struggling. Here, here's this, a good example obviously. because because when we read a lot of these standards, you know, it says like if it depicts anything is okay, that's not shun it. So by that theory, if you're watching people, ah. if you used to watch Friends and you know that they have consensual premarital sex and cohabitation. Are, we're do, supposed to shun that? Do you not watch it? But here's a good example. Here's one. Groundhog Day. Can we not watch it because it was just bad? I, well, that's another good reason. Uh, by the way, I saw some terrible BuzzFeed list that proclaimed Friends is one of the greatest sitcoms of all time. And that, of no. course, is just wrong. Any list that doesn't lead with news radio is not respectable. I don't know. So, of course, there's going to be heady stuff. And, like, yeah, I mean, like, so like I was saying, Groundhog Day, great movie, good message. There is that little, but it deals with all sorts of complex themes. I mean, he tries hey, to. Hey, he uses that power to win his woman. He uses the power to, to win his woman. There's that scene with the other girl, you know, Nancy, when they're just making out. Now, it, admittedly, I love that movie, but I hate sitting there when that scene comes up, if I'm even with my mom or something like that, even though he's just. Uh, whatever, but uh, but think any suicide. Lots of complex, difficult themes in that movie. Complex well, themes in Groundhog Day. See, I know, I wouldn't even look at that and think complex themes. How stupid is this? Well, I actually wrote was had to write my senior thesis in uh, language arts English class in high school. We had to write it based on Groundhog Day. I've given Groundhog Day a lot of thought. Don't worry. Okay, I'm here okay. for you. So I don't know. Yeah, I think people are. I think it's to someone's detriment if something like Toy Story three as an example, uh, would cause you to be uncomfortable. That's just strange. Also, the other example in here about how he had a friend whose favorite hobby was playing bass guitar. First off, might I add, no one's favorite hobby is playing bass guitar. People who play no, people pe- that can't play rhythm guitar. Yeah, love people to who play, play bass, bass guitar, guitar are the is the the third guy who the band chose not to be the guitar player. And they said, oh, but could you play the bass? 
And they say, okay. Booyah! No one's passionate about bass guitar except for jazz bassists. That's a different thing. Oh, they're good. But he yeah, says nice. his uh, bass playing friend was his favorite thing and hardest thing to let go. And as a result, when he got back from his mission, he needed the most time before he started doing it again. I understand if it's something that's addictive, that could be a problem, you know, if it just took away from everything else you did. But when I came home, you know what I did? I plugged in my old amplifier and turned on my guitar, and I was overjoyed after two years removed from my music equipment to be able to use it again and do stuff. That was wonderful for me. Of course I missed it when I was a missionary. It's not wrong that I just hopped back in. I didn't just, like, ignore my family and, and forge problematic relationships yeah. because I yeah. loved my guitar. Kevin Johnson, your list is silly. I don't even want to read the other ones, but I like. The All right, let me give you. Let me let's do a quick update if we can. We need to move on from this. We spent way too long. Uh, but the Mormon of the Year, Jeff, did we win? Uh, well, the official winners have not been uh, announced. But as far as the popular vote, I'm assuming you refer to that, my good friend. We, no, the popular vote is winning to me. Uh, not according to Al Gore. <laughs> not so much. Uh, as luck would have it, we did not. We led. Uh, we led for. We led for about half of the time. But now we lost to the feminists, as we often do. You twim army, I'm proud of you, each and every one of you. I'm both proud and disappointed. These numbers are, are but a pittance. They do not reflect our listener base. Where were all of you? Why did you not obey our command to vote for us? Yeah, the uh, well, I feel like I feel like most of my people did, Jeff. I blame your following. They did not support you. They didn't rally. Here's the thing, though: we didn't promote it very heavily on our own twin feed because we wanted to look more legitimate. We promoted it more on our personal Facebook walls. Th that said, we had non-members voting for us, which is very commendable. Thank you to all those of you who wanted to rally. Yeah, to you people who don't care about Mormonism and still wanted me and Jeff to be the Mormon of the Year. Yeah. Thank but you. but for the final tally, at least for the popular vote, the broad category of LDS feminists uh, got 407 votes. Hans Matson, who's that Swedish guy who wrote that New York Times article about doubt back last fall. Where did he even come from, man? That, that guy doesn't have a following. Maybe I'm honestly, I bet somebody on Mormon Stories or something posted it. People love him over there on Mormon Stories. Uh, and then, sure. but then Ezekiel Ansaw. Al knows more about this guy. Some football player. Yeah, he, uh, he just didn't play football at all, and then he was drafted. Good for him, but he got he got a lot of traction over on the Cougar board. Yeah, and that's how that the, happened. Uh, and then you had us, BYU Sports, who just promoted it ourselves, like any good candidate would. I mean, you've got to get out the right, get out the vote. So we came in fourth. On we the were vote. number one for a, a good chunk of that time. Oh, wow, we we eclipsed. I remember it was a couple days into it, we eclipsed the feminists, and I felt like this was going to happen. We were going to ride this wave of popular support. The the only the only people that I would have been happy losing to would have been Jabari Parker and he didn't even place or that that Fox woman Alex Fox or she she's not even on it is she Yeah she was I don't think she was Jabari Parker no. was at least on the list but I don't know where he is or is he not on he was on the list where is he Jabari Parker got Amy Fox Alex and Jabari Parker came in tenth place It's hard behind it's hard. Kate Kelly and ahead of Imagine Dragons. Dude, you gotta love that though. We we brought home Jeff twelve percent, twelve point seven percent of the vote. I feel I Good feel work, people. I feel wonderful about it. Thank We've you. We've done it. So while while I did start out with a criticism, honestly though, thanks to everybody who went and voted. That, that was it was super fun. That was man. a lot That's of fun. Cool. <clears throat> now the editorial staff will still choose their own Mormon of the Year, and I don't think they uh, announce rankings officially. So I'm just going to take and this. And if I may, from the comments uh, that Kurt <laughs> is making uh, over there, I don't suspect that we will we would have fared, fared well even if we had won the popular vote. I just don't see them as, uh, no. as appreciating the value we brought this year as more than everyone else, though I do. I think we should win. We should, but uh, we we anyway. don't we don't deserve out. This was a victory for us. We did not medal though. We came in fourth, six votes shy of the bronze. Boof! Just Ugh. couldn't see it coming. Speaking of we the Olympics, have, are we coming really, up. We need Jeff. To we should have cheated. I could have written a, a grease monkey script that would have voted all night long. We could have had a thousand votes in two hours. 
And just when they get the, that, be, that would have been fun just to see the final results when the top vote getter gets four hundred. The, the I do legit cheesy four- web hacks for a living. I mean, the, I should have. Would, is that even cheating? Using your skills to vote for yourself? Well, that's called voter fraud. That's what someone like Viktor Yanukovych does. So in that case, yeah. Oh, but going okay. out there and just saying, well, "Hey, I everyone, vote for me." That's I wasn't it. suggesting that we poison anyone or have them murdered. I was just saying, using our resources. I'm pretty sure that you want to have the ordained women movement poisoned with dioxin. I cannot confirm that. I can only but, deny it. Hey, what happened with that? What was her name? Tora Bright. We're coming up on the Olympics again next month. And remember four years ago, you were big on the Australian I bet she's, I bet she's pregnant with child right now. Let me see. Tora Bright. What happened Are to Tora Bright? Are you Googling her as well? Whoa. She's married. Oh, of course she is. That always happens. She wears beautiful dresses in Sports Illustrated. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Endorsements. I her. see nothing of her personal life. This is not... Hold on, I'm looking in news, news. Everyone loves it when we look up, oh, there's personal life, let's see. She's skipping the Sochi Olympics if safety problems worsen. So she's not going because she's Mormon, that's what we're learning. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Because, you know, the gays and Mormons and things. Well, Al, that means she's around. No, she is still riding, man, she's still going. But is she married? Well, her last name is still Bright. That means anything. I don't think she's married, Al, and we've been talking for four years about your need to uh, to woo her. She lives in Salt Lake. Come on, man. Go snowboarding with her. Then your snowboarding will have purpose. That's true. Yeah, exactly. Though, I would feel a little silly snowboarding with her. I just ride down the middle parts, and she would be... <laughs> <laughs> yumping and yumping and yumping. You love that word yumping. It's so great. I'm a Swede. I love this. Uh-huh. Um, other stuff going on here. You might have seen this article go around last weekend. A couple of people sent it to us, so we'll mention it. Um, basically, are Mormons part of a, a social group that is inherently superior to others? So there's a woman who, named Amy Chua who wrote a book a couple of years ago called Tiger That's Mom. That's not a real name. No, that is, is not a real name. Chua? She's She's Chinese. So she wrote a book called Tiger Mom that claimed that Chinese women just naturally make better mothers. But now she and her husband have written a book called The Triple Package. They explain why certain just social groups, whatever they may be, are are more, uh, more prone, as they say, to rise to prominence in America. So the li- the groups are, in no order of importance, Jews, Indians, Chinese, Iranians, Lebanese-Americans, Nigerians, Cuban exiles, and Mormons. Wait, Cuban exiles? Well, well yeah, because they are lead- above Mormons. Well, no, no. I said in no particular order. There's no order. I don't believe that, though. Cuban exiles will never be above Mormons. Okay, you heard it here first. Okay. Anyway, the point of this is just simply that uh, apparently Mormons are just naturally better. Do you feel that we're naturally better? That we are superior to Catholics and Protestants? Uh, I feel like, well, it's sort of the Joseph Smith model, right? Any any religion that does not ask all of its members has no means to produce the faith necessary for salvation, whatever that quote is, right? You know what I'm talking about? Sort of, yeah. I'm paraphrasing, obviously, very severely. The... Uh, um, so it's sort of that model, right? Because we are, we are. There's so much asked of us. I feel like we're in a position to maybe perform a little better. We're we're more, we're better trained in the ways of sacrifice than uh, than most, I would say. Which is why maybe Cuban refugees would be on that list as well, right? Like it's it's this idea that you can you can take everything away, and we we still have our core values that are going to help us rise. Yeah, maybe, but. Uh, she like no. Do you, what what do you think, Jeff? I don't know. Do I understand agree? where she's coming from. I don't. You can't have blanket rules, but I think there is a fair thing to say. Like, yeah, a lot of Cuban immigrants leave Cuba because they come to the U.S. and they want to work hard and they want to make it in America. And Cuba, you know, is a communist disaster. So, so there's an understanding in that sense where, by and large, yeah, they probably come here and make it happen, right? And a lot of the time, that's what you see: immigrant groups <coughs> come here and want to make it happen. Um, there, I've seen some other interesting research that does say you're, though, that you're you're talking towards making a non-point. What are you trying to say? Nothing. I'm just making I'm making my non-point. 
Jeff, I want to know, you clearly did not agree with the fact that, that it was because of sacrifice to, that we are on this list. Why do you think we are on this why list? Do you, well, it's, it's just, there we are. Why do I think I just asked you? <laughs> but it's interesting, though. Most of the uh, Part of it is, I don't think it's that we've been exiles, but there's, there's a good Mormon work ethic and a lot of that. Yeah, that does... Uh, Here's the danger we have. That is based on our is history. Now that we've we've been successful for a generation, all our kids are snot-nosed punks, and none of them will succeed. So in another generation, it'll all be a failure. We might fail. She argues that, uh, yeah, that stuff, the superiority complex from other groups has caused them to, uh, you know, to fail, to not be at the top anymore, whereas Mormons and Jews, for example perpetually feel that they have to have to work and kind of dig themselves up. We got a up. chip on his shoulder, that's true. You could say, so you could argue then that things like the I'm a Mormon campaign, the Mormon moment, will they actually result in our downfall that we will not make her second edition of this book? Uh, maybe, maybe no. We have gone too mainstream. Hey, so I got another question. Can we move on from this? Yeah, sure, whatever. So uh, there's some talk on, on uh, obviously a lot has happened in the gay marriage run this last week we've been posting it up on our facebook as as uh the the gay marriage in utah in particular right has gone back and forth at first they were recognized and then they came back and said they are not recognized and then the aclu sued the state of utah to say yes they have to be recognized and now there's a bunch of people that are sort of married but maybe not well, that- and we're not sure what's happening Yes, Jeff. Well, no, I mean, well, as far as Utah is concerned now, I guess they're just not. I mean, they took, yeah, so the Supreme Court stepped in and at least stopped gay marriages in Utah while they analyzed the case. So that happened. And then, yes, then the the Utah state clerk or somebody said, and by the way, none of them are married. It was all a fallacy. And so where does that leave people? Nowhere. Basically, it just leaves them back where they were before. It's basically saying, hey, everything that happened within the past month just never really happened. So let's just go back to where we were a month ago. But we'll keep the fee you paid for your marriage license. <laughs> Non-refundable. We're going to so, keep that 80 bucks. Yeah. So one of the questions that obviously has come up uh, over and over again around this, uh, which we've talked about a couple of times, is the will Mormon bishops be forced to marry same-sex couples? Yes, by... Right? Yeah, under lock and key, yes. Which I don't, like, you can't force anybody to marry anyone, can you? Like, I don't think that that's the way it works even with straight people right now. Can I force a Catholic priest to marry me? No. I don't, I don't. He, I, I believe they can opt out. There's no forcing. The, the, the better question, um, I feel like, here... Uh, in regards to Mormonism, was asked in the comments of one of the articles we've been reading recently, uh, where they said, they said, way better than that, let's consider a Mormon bishop who performs a same-sex marriage of his own volition, right? So he chooses to go and do this. Is there or should there be a uh, any guideline from the church saying whether or not they can do that? Because they are, they are at that point, they are clergymen who are a lot, like they're authorized to perform marriages, in their state, um, and and should the church have any say in who they who they perform those marriages for, or should they endorse it, or should like if if a bishop went and did it, would we be surprised if there was any uh, I guess slap on the wrist, so to speak? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you bring an interesting perspective because yeah, I've only thought about the legal side of things. Just simply that. I don't think bishops would be forced to unless the church wanted to retain the fact that a bishop could also civilly marry people, right? And they could deny them that if they refused to be involved in gay marriage. But yeah, you're uh Well, no, 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 no. it's not a it's not like that the refusal that, I don't that's think that's how I've always viewed it. I don't think anybody's going to bring that up, right? Like if if I go to a priest and, and say I want you to marry me and he says I'm busy. Which well, he's like, what? What do I care? I go find another one. Right? Yeah, which he could say. But what I am saying is, there could be, and there, this also brings the other question of what gay people are going to want a bishop to marry him in the first place. There's also that. I mean, are you? If you're, I'm sure if you're a I'm gay sure member of the church, you're going to be like, hey, bishop, I really want you to marry me. There, I'm sure it does. Well, no, exist, imagine, imagine, like if I was a gay member of the church, right, and uh, best friends with my bishop all growing up, and then I, I, like, I mean, uh, just because you, you are. Uh, an active 
homosexual does not mean that you lose these friendships. So if he was still, like, if I was still very, very close to my bishop, I could totally see going to him and saying, hey, I want you uh, to provide this. And I, I, like, if I were a bishop in that situation, I would want to, right? Potentially, but then you could see a bishop who I would just want could... to be there for this person who's struggled plenty. You could, but then, I, I, yeah, it's interesting to think about, though, that even if the church does not want to do gay marriage, if the bishops can opt to do it. And that's... I don't yeah, I don't know what would happen in that case. What do you think? I what really don't happen? know. I don't know if Salt Lake would forbid them from doing so or if like a lot of things they would just leave it to local discretion to sort out. And if the bishop says, "Yeah." Well, then what is me. that like well, local yeah. discretion would just be a bishop or a stake president. You know, the, the bishop just saying like, "I feel good about this and I'm going to go and do it." Well, I suppose nothing nothing flies in the face more of uh we believe that marriage is between a man and a woman sort yeah. of family proclamation doctrine than uh, like then me choosing to go and do that. I what's what's interesting is even people that have like, I mean they screwed up and they they didn't do it right or they they had their own struggles and they um, they are compelled to not be married in the temple, right? I like bishops bishops that get asked to go and do that. I mean they they do it because they love the people, but it's not. It's not something that they glory in. They don't revel in those yeah, marriages, of course, of right? Course. Yeah. Well, I'm sure. Sh- yeah, exactly. I mean, there. Are, I'm sure everyone's happy to do it. That's an occasion we're celebrating. But obviously, you'd want to feel like, hey, wouldn't it be great if you were also doing? How interesting. But, but since we are talking about it, I do think that if gay marriage became the law of the land, and it came to this issue of bishops and what they could and could not do and stuff, I honestly think something would come down from Salt Lake that would say, "You are not to perform gay marriages if you're asked to." Because it would be antithetical to exactly what you said, official church positions on things. I mean, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. There you go. There you go. So I think that Shoot, could man, happen. we got to wrap this up. we got, we got we I know, we spent all this time, time today. But also, building on that, you might have seen last week this, this fine young fellow um, chose to uh, go on a hunger strike while, Utah, while gay marriage was legal in Utah. Now it's okay. Now he can, uh, you know, he can eat. It worked. The strike, <laughs> like his own personal rain dance. His so so, just so I understand, he his protest uh, was was that it had become such an abomination to him that his state where he lived had was recognizing gay marriage. That his solution was to not eat. Right. Yeah. He was only he only ate took vitamins and drank water. So it wasn't like he was like gonna die or anything. Was he doing a startup or was he protesting? <laughs> he was he was protesting. He wrote in his oh. blog that this was he would not do this until until they they got rid of it and they did get rid of it. He won. Well, so so is I mean we we don't encourage that as a church, do we? That's not the way that we that we seek to bring about civil change. <laughs> no, no, I, d- I don't think we're very big on people going on uh, irrational hunger strikes. I don't what would that's part what, of what we do? <laughs> Okay, good. I was just making sure because I love food. So do I. I, I don't like think I would ever go on. I love that now he said, and if he has to protest again, it will be giving up football. <laughs> I'm not golfing until I will miss the BYU is- game. Oh, it's going to be terrible. Oh, and I do this so you'll know up in that big Capitol building. Yeah, yeah. So that so that uh, went down, but now the hunger strike's already over. Uh, Utah is fascinating because if any state. Where uh, the gay marriage thing has been an issue for it to hit in Utah, it's just it's quite the battleground. But why scenario. not? Why not hold a protest sign or something of that? Because nature? everyone protests when you hold a hunger strike. People pay attention, and they did because we we're talking about the him. only people that pay attention are Ruby Tuesdays. <laughs> have you ever been to Ruby Tuesday? I have. I never it's have. Quite, it is adequate. I Applebee's strikes me as superior. It would be. Absolutely. And are you saying that because you used to work at Applebee's? I have Applebee's stock. That's right. I know Full you do. I was actually looking at some old uh, Ukraine photos the other day. Yeah. And I didn't realize in a lot of these photos. You know that one when we found a good sickle and hammer on a building and we took a really funny picture of you standing there while... Uh, the, you, me, and Cobb? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The three of us and we kind of put our legs up in this funny little pose. Um, I remember. You are wearing an Applebee's t-shirt. And I laughed to myself and said, only Al Doan will travel to Ukraine and care so little about his wardrobe... <laughs> He'll just be wearing an Applebee's T-shirt, walking around in a former Soviet republic. Those were the days. 
Yeah, that was me. That was definitely yeah. me. Um, other quick, quick news real quick. Let's see here. Mitt Romney's going to a YSA conference in Arizona. Get your tickets now, people. Yeah, if you're in Arizona, folks, in the East Valley, around there, whatever, go see them. Oh, yeah, we have like two more weeks till his uh, documentary comes out. I'm excited for it. We'll have to post a full review on our own website. Yes. Um, other yes. quick news. A, book of, a first edition of the Book of Mormon was recently appraised on Antiques Roadshow for $100,000, which is kind of cool. I'd actually like to see that episode see him Wait, thumb through that it. That was on Antique Roadshow? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was on Antiques Roadshow. Where, when? I want to go. Well, oh, there it is. I can watch it right there. <laughs> what, they post a Thank link Thank you, the video? Deseret News. You've redeemed yourself <laughs> for that terrible top ten list. <laughs> Good um, job, guys. Um, um, the trial for the Vegas missionaries. Re- or the, remember the two guys walking around pretending to be Vegas missionaries and then robbing people? Uh, yeah. That's they, delayed. They, they, they we talked about houses? that happening. Yeah. Not happening for a little while. They uh, they have just postponed it. They asked for a, for an extension and got it. Update. And lastly, well, oh, another quick mention. You might have seen this. The, uh, there's a, a group that's unveiled a just basically to protest separation of church and state. A Satan statue to be at the Oklahoma State Capitol because they have a Ten Commandments there. So they're trying to make a point of, well, the Ten Commandments can be here. Why can't a picture of Beelzebub? Well, a statue of Beelzebub. Sit on his lap, have a good time. It's kind of, it's kind of weird. There's also, there was also another one that we were talking about, a, uh, a no-God church movement, right? So there's people that get together as an assembly group so they can hang out on Sunday and not worship anything. Yeah, because that's not a... Re- there, there's a bunch of this kind of going around right now of like, hey, you religions... Well, we I know. I like think what uh, you have, but we don't like the sacrifice or uh, or faith. Yeah, I think uh, I think have. Utah's actually been getting some more of those atheist billboards recently, as well. It, I thought I saw. It's kind of about bizarre. That. It's kind of a weird, a weird bit of uh, of feedback from people. I mean, that's weird that that like your response to all those religious people would be to, uh, I, I don't know. Is it mocking? Is that what this is, or is it that they genuinely want the benefits but not the sacrifice of of religion? Yeah, well, I don't know if they want the benefits. It's it, People congregate as groups, no matter what they are. And some call those a religion, some call those just a social group. You can call it whatever, you know, I mean. I call them Swansonites. I might have a master's degree in sociology, but I can't tell you any more than I already have. Pawnee Rangers. <laughs> and lastly, what does the bishop say? No, oh gosh, no. This can't be our last one. That's an awful parody that some... Awful parody or brilliant parody. No, awful. I watched it. It was definitely it's awful. It's what does the bishop say if you have... The bishop says, church, 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 church. Church, 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 Yes, and good... Bu- talk, 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 goodbye, talk, talk. Goodbye, goodbye, family. Goodbye, goodbye, family. All the YouTube comments are how bad they are singing. Uh, still, like 80,000 views, more views <laughs> I than I get. Well, just because you can do... Let's read some comments. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should... Or, um, that's a good one. So I actually think this was made as like a, you know, one of those like, let's get together as a war. Yeah, it was a war party. Video it was a war for you. I swear. And you could tell it did that because it was five minutes and anything that like was actually intended to be uh, consumed by masses would not be a five minute video of talk, 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 talk. I swear every church building has the same couches. That one's probably true. Oh, uh, it's true. <laughs> hey, uh, also, Jeff. I'm not like you'll know more about this than I do, but Evergreen International has shut its doors. In a way, Evergreen International was a large uh, support group for gay Mormons. Um, they pushed reparative therapy. Anyways, it's it, they shut down in, the, in that they rolled themselves into a bigger group called North Star. So they basically have taken their assets and combined it with North Star to be a newer and bigger group. So it's not like they sold your information. Pretty much. So it's not that they're gone. In their entirety, they're they're just moving on up. They've been bought out. Classic. Yeah. All right, man. Well, Jeff, I, I feel like I'm more happy ending on that note than I was on what does the bishop talk, say? Talk, so talk, 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 talk to talk, 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 talk. Sin, 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 sin. <laughs> you should not see that movie. You should go see this movie. See, I can do it with anything. You are ready to be a bishop. Anyway, Jeff. <laughs> That's never going to Everybody, be true. thank you. Thank you for for indulging us on this week. Uh I I uh, like even our our kind of goofy ranting on movies and all that stuff. We appreciate you. We enjoy the uh the rhetoric that we get to have. So thank you for that and thanks for listening. Thank you for voting for us as this week in or the uh, Mormons of the year. 
That was very fun. That was and, fun. And uh, you can always find us. Come drop us an email. Contact at thisweekinmormons.com or, em- or uh, just leave a comment over on thisweekinmormons.com. <laughs> and we've been doing this a long yeah, time. Yeah, fa- find us on Facebook. Doing. Find us on Twitter. A couple of plugs, though. Sign up for our mailing list. Get with the Gospel Study Sesh, our email-based study group, which is great. Also, Sunday School Bonanza. We have started off with the Old Testament for Gospel Doctrine lessons. Uh, it's where we go over Gospel Doctrine lessons and prepare. And also, a, a final plug, we are partnering with the blog This Mormon Life and producing a new podcast called Third Hour of Power, in which uh, it's very similar to Sunday School Bonanza, but we are going over the teachings of the Presidents of the Church manuals, which this year is Joseph Fielding Smith. Uh, I think that might be even more useful than Sunday School Bonanza because Elders Quorum, how many of you been to, Al, when the teacher shows up and just says, all right, and you just read paragraph through paragraph through the lesson. And that's your Oh, lesson. yeah, happens every So week. let's avoid that. And our goal with this is to get you at least prepared so you can at least be the person who uh, kind of uh, quarterbacks the lesson if your teacher sucks, basically. Be good. Get in there. Be great. Okay. Amen. All right, go do it, people. I feel blessed. And I'll talk to you later, Al. Thanks for being here. All right, see you, buddy. See you, pal. Thanks for listening, folks. Hope you have a great week. This has been This Week in Mormons, and we appreciate you joining us. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Young woman chat. Young man eat. Primary scenes and the missionaries teach. Elders move. Relief society sits. And the high priest group goes snooze. Dad says quiet. Mom says no. And the kids go, wow, wow, wow. But But there's there's one sound that no one knows. What What does the bishop say? Church, 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 What does the bishop say? Work, 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 What does the bishop say? Talk, 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 talk. Talk, 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 to talk. What, what does, does the bishop say? Re, 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 What does the bishop say? Nice white shirt, fancy tie, happy smile and shaking hands. Any time of the day, always there to help you out. His door is open, so welcome me. Like a refuge from the storm And if you need